Wanted, an ambitious, energetic, hardworking individual. Ability to work closely with others in a limited amount of space required. Must be able to speak fluent science. Duties include documenting observations, operating complex equipment, food preparation, and writing skills for journal entries for public and peer scrutiny. Tent provided, but successful applicant must provide own sleeping bag or bedroll. Must love the outdoors. Extensive travel, a must. Discovery of the Northeast Passage, Northwest Passage, and the North Pole captivated explorers for hundreds of years. The public sent these decorative postcards to their favorite heroes to show their support. Frederick A. Cook, left, and Robert E. Perry, right, raced to the North Pole in 1908 and 1909, which resulted in a bitter feud as to who got there first. However, years earlier, the two served together in a relief expedition named the Eric in 1901. During this time, Cook took many amazing images of the indigenous people, proving himself a skilled photographer. This image of an Inuit mother and baby is one of the more striking in the collection. The Inuit carvings featured in this case are a few select pieces from the collection of 28 items donated to the Goldthwaite Polar Library by Kenneth and Rosalie Drake in 2000. Dr. Drake continues to support as a lifetime member of the Friends of the Bird Polar Research Center. Polar Bear with Lifted Paw, carved by Joni Z. Peter Lucy in June 1989 at Cape Dorset on the southern shore of Baffin Island facing the northern part of the Hudson Strait. Greenstone Whale on a Bone Base, carved by Nevi Edercheck at Frobisher Bay on southwestern Baffin Island, date unknown. Two Geese Sitting on a Slab, carved by Moses Nagoji, a Cree Indian, date unknown. Seal pin, made from whale baleen with powdered walrus ivory and some adhesive. Date unknown. Written by Admiral Byrd, this article, titled Exploring the Ice Age in Antarctica, was published in 1935 in National Geographic magazine. Several of National Geographic's articles and issues were devoted to covering Byrd's explorations. This particular article discusses the disappearance of Little America between the first expedition and the second expedition. This photo documents the trail party during Admiral Byrd's second expedition to Antarctica, 1933-1935. Dr. Colin Bull, the third director of the Institute of Polar Studies, explored the dry valleys in Antarctica before coming to The Ohio State University. This book is titled Innocence in the Dry Valleys and was published in 2009. Pictured at far left is Dr. Bull next to Dr. Peter Noel Webb, a current member of the Bird Polar Research Center with the Geological Sciences Group. Kay Everett conducted pioneering soil investigations in Alaska and the Russian Arctic, which ultimately led to the creation of the Arctic Soils Database. Dr. Everett was a leading expert in understanding the role of high-latitude terrestrial processes, including their contributions to polar and global soil science, ecology, geomorphology, and hydrology. In 2005, Healy Odin Transarctic Expedition, also known as HOTRAX, was the first scientific crossing of the Arctic Ocean all the way from the Bering Strait to Fram Strait via the North Pole. The geological program of the expedition was led by Dennis Darby of Old Dominion University and Leonid Poliak with the Bird Polar Research Center in collaboration with Martin Jacobson from Stockholm University. Hotrax collected 21 cores of seafloor sediments averaging 12 meters in length from key sites across the central Arctic Ocean and nine high-resolution cores from the Alaskan margin. These cores, curated at the BPRC Sediment Repository under Poliak's direction, constitute one of the most complete Arctic paleoceanographic archive. In 2009, at the 32nd Antarctic Treaty Consultative Meeting, Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton stated, so, in the spirit of the treaty, and in light of the incredible discoveries that took place during the International Polar Year, let us resolve to keep making progress with sharp research and bold action on both ends of our planet, in the South and the North, for the good of our nations and for the people, but mostly for this beautiful planet we currently share, and the succeeding generations that should have the same opportunity to enjoy its bounty and its beauty.